Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to debrief on the ft.js file, which is the main JavaScript file that's used to calculate this estimate on our estimate.html file. And basically what it does is it interacts with these five controls, these five input boxes. And as these numbers are changing, I can see my total estimate changing. It's probably good just to refresh the page and see that the total estimate is set to $200 right off the bat. That's one photographer at $100 per hour and two hours. But as I change the number of photographers, if I go to two photographers at two hours, then my estimate would be 400. If I add a memory book for 250, that total goes to 650. If I add reproduction rights for all photos at 1250, I'm up to 1900 now. And then I am up to $1 per mile for travel expenses. And so as I roll that up, I can see this incrementing by two because I have two photographers. If I set that back down to one, then only one photographer would be traveling this distance. So it's good just to get a handle on the math that's happening behind the scenes. In my JavaScript file, there's a lot of code here and we will debrief on exactly what a function means and exactly what these statements, what these assignment statements mean with these compound operators in our screencasts on the end of chapter exercises. All of this stuff is important, but at a high level, I just want to show you what's going on here so that at a high level, you can kind of follow the code even if you don't understand every single statement yet. In the beginning, we are declaring four global variables. And the reason we find global variables is because we want to use photographer costs, total cost, memory book, and reproduction rights. We want to use those four variables throughout different functions. Variables are case sensitive. So if I call it photographer with a capital C cost here, I must use that down in my code as well. In our code, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six functions. All a function is, is a name, in this case, calc staff, given to a set of statements. That's all it is. So instead of writing all these statements every time we need them, we can simply write calc staff and run those statements. So for now, just think of a function as a name that you give to a series of statements. The name always ends in left and right parentheses, similar to a method. Functions and methods are very similar. Sometimes there's arguments that need to go inside those parentheses, but for now, this particular function simply runs and does these statements when calc staff function is called. The statements are always included in curly braces in a function, and it's common to start your first curly brace on the first line after the function name and put your last curly brace on a line by itself just so they stick out and are easy to see. You're also seeing a lot of console.log statements here. Those are completely optional. They are debugging tools, but all these console.log statements could be commented out or deleted and the function would run exactly the same. They just help me see what's going on at various steps in the function. In fact, I'll show you a console log real quick. On any browser, simply right click and inspect element. There's a tremendous amount of information about your HTML tags and about the CSS styles that are being applied. Console tab. The console tab will write to the console anything that you've asked it to log to the console in these parentheses. So in this case, it's logging the text num and then the value of the num variable. And so this text num colon and then the value of the num variable is an HTML input element. Uh, next, we are logging hours and the value of hours. Next, we are logging distance and the value of distance. And all of those are HTML input elements, the number of photographers, the number of hours, and the distance are these three input boxes. Next, we are logging the total cost and the total cost variable. And at this point in time, the total cost is zero. So console.log is simply a way to look in your browser, in your inspector, to see what the value of that variable or that expression is at that point in time. So we have a function that calculates all costs based on staff. And so that adds up the photographer cost, the hours cost, and the distance cost. Then we have another function that adds or subtracts this 250 
if memory book is checked. We have a third function that calculates the total cost based on if this particular checkbox is checked. Our fourth function is called reset form and it sets document.getElementById photo g num value one. So it's setting the default values of one, two, not checked, not checked, and zero to the five elements that make up the calculation for my total cost. This reset form functions also calling the calc staff function as well as calling the create event listeners function. The create event listeners function is wrapping all of our event listeners so that every time we run an event listener, we can run a calc staff or toggle memory or toggle rights function and recalculate the cost for the estimate. And those statements are actually on one line, which makes them easier to see. At the very bottom, we have a window.addEventListener statement. When the window is loaded, we're running the reset form function. The reset form function resets to their default values, one, two, not checked, not checked. Remember, memory book and reproduction rights were global values up here that were set to false. It runs the calc staff function, and then it runs a create event listeners function. So when we load the form, we're loading one, two, three functions. So we're running all this code when we reset the form. That is a brief update from a very high level of what this code is doing. In subsequent screencasts, we're going to really break down these functions statement by statement and learn what they do. Thank you.